Hey everyone, I'm Candy Delore and welcome to the second episode of Candy's Conversations, the Quarantine Edition. Joining me today is Amanda Fitzgerald, who is an award-winning PR strategist and business mentor. We'll be speaking about celebrities who have been stepping up to help during the coronavirus pandemic. Hi Amanda. Hi Candy. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. We are on week five of lockdown, so yeah. I think like a lot of us, we're all, I don't know, I think week five has been a bit knackering for uh, quite a few of us. <laughs> oh, well, yes, um, I think we're all adapting a new routine now, just staying at home. <laughs> staying even... at home, staying at home. <laughs> yeah. What else can we do? Well, no, it's true. What have you been up to during lockdown? Well, I've been mastering something because I live on my own and um, and I love ping pong. And before I uh, before the whole thing started, I bought my kids a ping pong table and it's a really minute one. It's about a metre or a metre and a half by, you know, a metre. And it's in my shed. And so what I do is I play double handed ping pong. Okay. <laughs> against the wall. I don't play with my kids. I don't want to play with me. So I just literally go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and I love it. And a friend actually said they find it quite therapeutic just listening to the bounce of the ball oh, I wow. <laughs> yes I think I saw you playing on your Instagram story I was like okay <laughs> yeah that's what I post that's my Insta story that's what I tend to do up there I'm afraid nice. show the madness of what's going on <laughs> nice well if you could just um introduce yourself to the viewers and the listeners just tell them who you are and what you do that'd be great yes sure so my name's Amanda Fitzgerald I am known by my clients as the ultimate door opener so what I do is I train entrepreneurs how they can secure press coverage so that they can have many more clients knocking at their doors. So that's what I do. Um, I literally train people how to get into the media. So you'll be familiar with that kind of uh, route. Yes, yes, definitely. Sounds cool though. It's a nice job. Yeah, I love it. It's, you know, out of all the jobs I've ever done, I just love this job. I get so much job satisfaction with my clients. When we do pitching ideas, I think about angles and then they get into the press. It's brilliant. It's it is the great it is a great job. So I'm so pleased I found something which I can actually do. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, so um today I thought it would be really good if I could speak with you about celebrities and stars. Great. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and you know what they've done for others during this um, unfortunate pandemic. Um, so I wanted to actually kick off by speaking about superstar Rihanna. Love Rihanna. Do you like Rihanna at all? What's your favourite Rihanna song? It always has to be the Umbrella Ella 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 song. I just it's love it. Classic, classic. I, I think I'd have to go along with that too. Puts you in a good mood and Duh. yeah, that's actually a quite a motivational song. You can stand under my umbrella. I'll be there for you, you know. <laughs> yes, come under it. Yes, take yeah. shelter with me. Yep, totally agree. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, I wanted to just briefly go over um, how much support Rihanna has um, put into her community, and not just her community, but actually worldwide. Um, she donated $5 million wow. uh, via her charity, Clara Lionel, to help some of the most vulnerable people. She sent money to food banks like in multiple different countries. Amazing. Yes, and this comes after her making a $700,000 donation already. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. So you see some people have got such a big, strong heart, and it's yes. so important as opposed to just self-promoting, which a lot of celebrities are doing, yeah. uh, and really winning, tick, tick, ticking. I think that's an amazing set of donations that she's doing. Yeah, I think so too. And she's only like 32 years old and oh, she's doing so much. You know, um, she also sent her father a ventilator. I think she's been sending equipment to Barbados as well really? to help other people. Yes, yes. So I heard about that on the news and I just thought, oh my gosh, Rihanna, she's just so oh, good. Oh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to have to log on and, you know, see what she's doing and then start playing all her songs. Thank you. Yeah. Money, then you can donate more money. <laughs> yes, definitely. Great woman. She's an absolute star for doing that. And, and she's got a fashion line as well, and a makeup well, line. Yes, she does, doesn't she? I think she's also got a lingerie line as well. And um, she's 32. Look at all these businesses. What yeah. the savvy she has got. It's wow, mind blowing. Exactly. I think she's been living in London for the past 
Yeah, well, so, oh. yes, uh, because of her um, connection with Fenty. Don't, I might, no, I'm not wrong. She has been living in London, though. Oh, really? Yes, yes. I'm not sure if she's still here. I doubt she's still here. She's back in the US, I'm thinking. Yeah. Right now. But, yes, she did stay here for quite a long time. Oh, wow. We're honoured to have the presence of yeah. her here. Come and back <laughs> We need superstars like you in London. <laughs> yes, let's get them there. Come on. Yes. <laughs> I suppose everybody's sharing their stardom literally from their own sitting rooms now. How much are you looking at people's backgrounds? Whenever I watch the news, I'm addicted to looking at the background. So do you know what? I've actually got a cable tidy here. <laughs> I hate a cable hanging. Yeah, so, and then somebody else was mentioning that everybody has got like a rammed full bookshelf. If you don't have a bookshelf, then you're a nobody. So <laughs> my bookshelf over there, okay, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think just having a plain white background is good enough, to be honest. Yeah, you've um, got a lovely plant, so that's making me feel better already, looking at your yeah. plant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always good to have nature in the background, I think so, anyway. Yeah, it I agree. brings some joy and mm. uh, brings a nice natural vibe to the conversation. Absolutely, yeah. 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 It's a nice little pretty distraction as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the next celebrity who I think is pretty amazing is Idris Elba. Oh, don't I talk to me about my man, Idris. <laughs> he is H-O-T. <laughs> I do agree that he's quite attractive. Yeah. Um, yes, he and his wife, Sabrina. Yeah. They have actually started a launch to raise $40 million wow. for people who have been affected by the coronavirus. I mean, that is amazing, $40 million. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think maybe he's, you know, aimed that high due to him having it, you know, himself when he was sick. He probably uh, can relate to... I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes, he had the coronavirus. I didn't know that I'd have been very upset if I'd have known that. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. Sorry. <laughs> you are hilarious. What's that song that he was in? Oh my God, when his voice comes on, it's the rap song. It's not oh, um, Boasty. Wiley. Wiley. Yes, yes, yes. He came on, it's like, oh my God, this man, I love his voice. Anyway, I've been distracted by his beauty, <laughs> by his generosity. <laughs> Yeah, him and his wife were doing that. And he also said that it would be a good thing if we all quarantined once a year, just like we have done so far, to remember this time. And, I mean, what do you think about that? Should we do a quarantine once a year? Sounds rather like doing a detox, you know, the January, dry January and veganuary and stuff like that. So maybe, yeah, I think quarantine means cuarenta, 40. So I think 40 is probably pushing it. Yeah. But I think a fifth, I could do a 15, a quinceañera, you know, <laughs> I couldn't do the full 40 again, I don't think, because I really, I'm, I've got a bit of cabin fever, you might have noticed, because I'm being a bit crazy, cray cray. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I get that, don't worry about it at all, I, I think my kids have cabin fever as well. <laughs> I know, so I was on a um, Zoom call with my family the other day, I was walking my dogs, I should have been back here by 7.30, and I was being quite wild and wacky. And I said, I'm so sorry but I, that I'm being like this. It's just because I've, I've got cabin fever. I haven't spoken to anybody all day. <laughs> Zoom call. That is so funny. Yes, I can definitely relate to the whole cabin fever issue. Um, cooped up, it's a lot. But I do agree with this other statement that we should actually quarantine once a year. And yeah, like you said, it's kind of like equivalent to doing a detox because not everyone who goes to work every day actually enjoys the environment that they're in True. um you know sometimes you're going into work even as an adult you're facing things like bullies or uh, jealousy and stuff like that toxic people um so it's also I think it's nice sometimes to just have a break from your normal routine as well I totally agree with you and I, I think it's actually a really good idea and I think you know for example if the kids want to have a day off school you can almost class it like as a mental health day just to yes. a bit of R&R &R, recuperate yeah therefore if you say okay I need to have 15 days off so I can just you know reset because we're all resetting aren't we rediscovering ourselves discovering new skills yeah. and discovering how to be on our own like for example I think you saw my interview with Terry Waite 
And you know, for yeah, example, he's had yeah. he five years in captivity in a darkened room. And I really wanted to speak to him because I thought it was so important to hear his hints and tips on how we can manage this yeah. isolation. We still can move about our houses, okay? Some of us don't have gardens, but yet we can still literally go from the kitchen to the bathroom to the bedroom. Yeah. Still, he was literally chained, you know, chained to a wall. It was disgusting. In a blackened room, he used to have a head, a hood thing he put on. He wouldn't see natural light. So with my week five of self-isolation going a bit, you know, making me a bit knackered and all that kind of thing. I'm going to revisit that interview and listen to his amazing words of wisdom because he shared so many. And, um, you know, for example, he said, write a diary. I haven't even, I haven't even started it, but I'm only five weeks. And we've got another six months, have we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we're definitely not having a summer that's out of the question. Yeah. They're not telling us that yet, but I do think that we won't be having a summer. Um, we might have it you know, weather-wise, but, you know, going out for ice creams and stuff like that, going to the parks and yeah. things like that, I think that might not be happening this summer. Because yeah. we need to keep that, you know, we, yeah, the good news, the breaking good news yesterday, Boris said, you know, we have reached the peak yeah. and that's kind of to kind of try and flatten it down. But I just hope that people don't go, oh, we've reached it, so let's all rush outside. I don't think people will be, but, you know, exactly. we are getting enough already of this. Long. Yeah. This is the time we definitely need to just stay safe by keeping inside. Um, and uh, I just, I don't even know. What did you on all of his movies? Yes, <laughs> some, good, some good advice there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to talk about Tom Hanks, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Have you heard about the little boy who sent him a letter? I did, and the boy's name is Corona. And for those who want Spanish speakers, I'm sure everybody knows this. what it means. It means crown in Spanish. So oh. he's leaving his family. Wow, I had no idea that Corona in Spanish meant crown. Corona. Say it. Corona. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think he reached out to Tom Hanks and he said that he was being bullied about his name. Oh. And I think Tom Hanks contacted him and said that he and his wife were really touched by his letter and then they sent him a typewriter wow yes and the name now I'm, this is where i'm not too sure about because the name on the typewriter was corona now is corona a brand in a typewriter or is that you know a special gift from tom hanks you know who's personalized the typewriter and put the name corona on it i haven't checked it out on google or anything like that to be honest yeah well that's really funny because literally this morning i went to my garage and i got inspired maybe i heard some you know that that story about the typewriter and it inspired me to go and get my mum's typewriter which is about 50 years old in the garage and it's going to be on my coffee table now and i'm going to start writing letters oh lovely the brand i can't remember the brand of that typewriter but it's an old one but you know, knowing Tom and all his contacts, it probably is. He's probably personalised it to Corona. Yes, that's so yeah. lovely. That's amazing. I remember when my mum bought me a typewriter when I was younger, actually. <laughs> Did you any letters? Yes, I used to write stories with it. Um, yeah, I just used to write stories, to be honest, loads of stories. <laughs> that's what you're doing, you see. You're a communications expert. So right. they do say when you're seven, what you do age seven is what you then go on to do. So I wonder how old you were when you had your typewriter. Um, I probably was about seven, to be honest. There you go. Isn't that amazing how you can predict what you're going to do? It's true. I used to typewrite little stories and poems, and I used to stick them on my mum's walls in her house like literally everywhere and her friends would come and as soon as I opened the front door or whoever opened the front door they would be greeted by all these poems and stories stuck oh, wow. in my mum's wall. Oh my god that's do you know what that's the first ever social media coming <laughs> <laughs> at you boom 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 <laughs> my mum you know what my mum actually never complained she I don't <laughs> I'm surprised now thinking about it you know my mum would just walk along and just read them and you know I'd, <laughs> I'd really make an effort <laughs> so um yeah very creative of you very impressed yeah do you know what quarantine is actually bringing back some fond memories of my childhood for me to be honest it's been quite nice yes yeah, so um that's what Tom Hanks and his wife did bought Corona a typewriter I think that's really lovely 
actually, does he live in Australia? Because I know that he had coronavirus there. Does he actually live there? Oh, is it? I don't know if he lives there, to be honest. But he definitely had it whilst there, so... Okay, I didn't know that he had it while he was there either. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. That he had it. So he to my sources. <laughs> You are filling in the gaps most definitely because I didn't know that that's where he caught it. Oh, God, um, I hope I'm right. He probably are. I'm just probably um, a bit outdated with my information. <laughs> no, you're more upset, you know, about the corona business, about the poor boy called... Anyway, he's obviously a very happy boy now. Yes. And people have stopped being silly and, um, you know, calling, you know, being nasty to him just because of his name. How ridiculous yeah. is that? Yeah. I mean, that is really petty, to be honest. That is really sad. Okay, so moving on, um, let's talk about Joe Wicks. Oh, Joe Wicks, that one. <laughs> that celebrity <laughs> who's allegedly been beamed into every single um, living room at 9 a.m. every morning, but not mine, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, I ain't your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be quite yeah, honest and say that. He's not um, in my living room at the moment, Eva, although he probably should be the way that we're eating over here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you eating for England? <laughs> yes, probably for England and other countries as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Joe Wicks is, um, he's been doing a number of exercise classes, hasn't he, online for people? Well, he has, and then it kind of, you know, very coincidentally tied in with his book launch so you know, okay. I did a bit of a roundup recently in the newspapers to see who has got most net the, you know which brand name to have the, the most mentions it was between Zoo, Joe Wick, Dyson and then it was the Royal Mint because they had just started to produce face masks or something I can't remember but Joe Wicks was definitely up there you know getting loads and loads, loads of media coverage I mean what a PR coup for him Mm -hmm. to, you know, to be the nation's PE teacher but you know yeah. I, think, uh, I mean I've got friends who are fitness teachers and actually do you know what I think move over Joe Wicks let's get some smaller businesses in people's living rooms I've got a friend who's a yoga teacher down in um down in Brighton she charges about five quid for a session keep these small businesses going they've all got the expertise they've got yeah. the qualifications you know and that's what I that's my um <laughs> my rant of the day and I agree with that. I mean, I think when I first heard of Joe Wicks, wasn't he doing food? Yeah, he was doing food. Wasn't he doing, was he the, the 15 minute meal man? That's it. Yes. That's yeah. what I knew Joe Wicks for. Then all of a sudden he became a, an exercise uh, guru. I don't know how that happened, but I, I don't really see anything about him doing food anymore so has he stopped that or I don't know I mean you know I've seen his huge empire I think Mary Porter went into his offices and he's got massive offices you know congratulations to him it's great what he's doing but um yeah it's just basically the the brand is growing and growing and growing and as will his um fan base now I mean I don't know how many million people are actually tuning in every morning to do his exercise programs and so you know good for him but also Support your local exercise gurus as well. That's my, you know, my point. Most definitely. Most definitely. I think that's so important. And there are lots of people in, you know, our communities yeah. who could probably do, you know, just as good as him. <laughs> so, um, yeah, absolutely. And also it's more personalised. And particularly because I do a Zoom class or a FaceTime class. And it's only eight people and it's beamed in from um, South America. And other people from New York come into it. And it's a brilliant class. Wow, that is so much on a yoga mat. Literally, I was, I was doing laps, you know, running up and down. It was amazing. So yeah. there are other amazing fitness gurus out there. Yes, there there is. Definitely. I have to agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's really good, though, that he's actually, you know, taken into account the children being at home and started these PE um, sessions. So, um, yeah, that's just something to add to what's going on um, in lockdown, well, an activity that you can do in lockdown with the rest of the nation. Well, um, you know, so another thing is, you know, you've got, is it, you've got FOMO, fear of missing out, and actually everybody's and uh, Susie Walker, when I interviewed her the other day from um, Psychologist magazine, she calls it JOLO, the joy of missing, no, JOMO, the joy of missing out. Mm -hmm. But actually it's quite nice 
for everybody to know that at nine o'clock, everybody will be literally jumping up and down, doing their star jumps to Joe Wicks. Yeah. So they're not all going, oh, actually, I can't be bothered. But actually, they have yeah. to be, because that's the time that the PE teacher is blowing his whistle, saying, come on, everybody. <laughs> Big star jumps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Tyler Perry, who is an entertainment uh, mogul, yeah, he has actually um, purchased groceries for high-risk shoppers in Atlanta and also in New Orleans. Wow! Yes, which is absolutely amazing. He's done it across seventy-three stores. Hang on, how has he done it then? Has he got people to do it, or is he physically yeah. doing it? I think he had people on his, on his behalf do it for him. Yeah. Um, and he also left over $21,000 in tips for um, restaurant workers. Wow. <laughs> God, he is amazing. There are some really generous people out there. That yeah. is and you know that song, um, he's got the whole world in his hands? Yeah, yeah. He also started a challenge on social media Mm -hmm. And all the celebrities, like the singers and actors and stuff, they sang um, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands, um, which is really good for, you know, keeping people's spirits up and giving them hope and faith, especially if you're religious. Yeah. So it was lovely to see him do that. Well, I'll tell you one thing, you know, just doing these acts of generosity, acts of human kindness, they go such a long, 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 long way. I'm a leopard print addict. You might have noticed by my jacket. Yeah. <laughs> a friend who's also being very generous she's down in um down in Cornwall she's a counsellor and she's literally doing home to home visits you know delivering food and groceries and everything <clears throat> but she's got a friend who makes these face masks and she was making one for her for Pauline with the bumblebees on it or something like that and she suddenly saw the leopard print and said oh, Amanda <laughs> friend, Amanda she's got the addiction to leopard print I'm going to get one done for her so if you see me out and about with a leopard print mask That'll be me. <laughs> Lovely. And I have noticed that you do have an addiction to leopard print. I think, um, did you even have something for your dog in leopard print at one time as yes. well? Yes, and she's gone and lost it. She had a leopard print bone. <laughs> Lovely. Can I, you're the first person I'm going to say this idea to. Please back me up or, or say no, it's a crap idea, okay? okay. What I want to do is hashtag lockdown leopard. One day, the whole nation, we all need to be wearing leopard print. What do you reckon? Should we get a, can we get a campaign going? Just you know, something fun to look forward to, let's say. What do you know what? I do think that you could actually get quite a few fashionable people to, um, yeah, come along with you on your leopard lockdown. I do think so. Yeah, leopard lockdown. Think... And then maybe we ch donate to charity, you know, one quid or a five quid or something if you're going to be wearing your leopard. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's a good idea, actually. You know what? I have a friend who I grew up with, and her mum yeah. always used to wear leopard print all the time. Oh, yeah. spirit. So, I think you could find your other leopard print lovers. You should do that as a hashtag, too, leopard print lovers, and recruit all the people who love leopard print. <laughs> right, okay. So what are we going to call it? Leopard print lovers or leopard lockdown? You should do two. Right. So you can recruit all your leopard print um, lovers and then do your leopard print lockdown with your leopard print lovers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right. It's going, it's going to go crazy. Yeah. But I think if everybody does it on a certain day, everybody wears something that's got leopard print on it. It's something yeah. to look forward to and to like, oh, what am I going to wear? I've got so many different leopard things. I've got jumpsuits, trousers, you yeah. know, pants. <laughs> you, uh, you know what? I remember um, when I was looking at your photos of you in South Africa. Yes, yes. And you had a whole load of leopard print. <laughs> I did, yes. I brought my leopard outfit because I was going to Africa. Come on. <laughs> that was lovely. And then I also saw you with, I think when you came back, actually, I don't know how you did this, but you had leopard print chairs and everything. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was actually a restaurant in South Africa. They suddenly said, oh, oh my God, Amanda's going to go mad. We have to bring her because they went there a few days before I'd arrived. They lovely. had to bring me back. So I could uh, literally sit on a, in a herd of leopard chairs. <laughs> that is lovely. It that is, is cool. <laughs> so, um, I guess everybody knows what to get you for special occasions. Anything that has leopard print, hey? <laughs> well, I'm going to be 50 on the 12th of June, everybody. So hey-ho. 
Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be wearing leopard all day. Actually, yeah. maybe I should make the 12th of June leopard day. Maybe we should do that. That's yeah, good. I think you should get your hashtags ready because it's the 1st of May today. You've yeah. got enough time to get those two hashtags ready so that, you know, and you've got the date when you want everybody to do the leopard lockdown. So why not do it? You know, I'll join in. I'll get ready for the 12th of June and have Can some... You share with your community because you've got quite a wide community, haven't you? Yes, yes, I will. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, and then how, how are we going to actually get people to, you know, to show that they're wearing their leopard? Where do they... Is there a Facebook page I need to launch or something? Yeah, that would be a good idea to launch a Facebook page, or, you know, a few social media pages, Instagram. Um, I'm more of an Instagram person, to be okay. honest. Yeah. My following is more on there than any other platform. But Twitter would be quite good, I think. Um, okay. You know, get people ready, just create a flyer. Mm -hmm. And let everybody know that the 12th of June is Leopard Lockdown Day. Woo! Yes. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I love it. Thank you for cementing the idea. That's <laughs> fine. I'd love to embark on this journey with you. <laughs> I can't see any leopard on you, so you may not be um, allowed on, I'm afraid, Candy. <laughs> I bet you have secretly somewhere. <laughs> That is so funny. Oh, yes, I like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Speaking of um, animals, did you watch that um, documentary, Tiger King? Do you know, I actually saw them reviewing it on Gogglebox, and I'm really, I hate gore, and one and somebody's arm got e eaten off, and it really put me off the whole thing, but I know everybody's going wild about it. Mm -hmm. And also, somebody said, what's the wife called? Carol or something? Yeah, Carol Baskin. So they said that I'm in my niece said, Oh Amanda, you're Carol Baskin. You're Carol Baskin. <laughs> my leopard print. So maybe I need to watch it actually. <laughs> that is hilarious. But I don't know what Carol Baskin's like. All I've seen is a picture of her, so I don't know what she's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> she tries to say that you fed your husband to the tiger. Oh, shit, really? Okay. <laughs> you heard the song on TikTok about Carol Baskin. Oh, I haven't heard it. <laughs> People have got it in their heads. They've made memes um, about it. They've made memes, sorry, about it. They've oh, got it Mimi, in their I love that way. I thought, wow, is that the way you actually pronounce it? Mimi. <laughs> no, sorry. I, do you know what? I'm a Mariah Carey fan, and sometimes I get, I'm so used to saying Mimi. Um, oh, okay. So it came out, but I meant to say memes. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was talking about Mariah this morning, that's why. <laughs> but yes, um, they've made memes about it, saying, who else has that song, Carol Baskin, in their heads. And it goes like this, Carol Baskin killed her husband, whacked him. I can't remember the rest of it. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm going to get Nina, my daughter, to share with me the TikTok of um Yeah. A lot of them are doing it on the, um, over the record, um, Savage. Right. Okay. I'll need to look it up, I'm afraid. Yeah. It's crazy the things that are coming out these days. Oh, my God. Well, you know, everybody's secrets are out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are. They are. Do you know what? I quite feel sorry for this lady, Carol Baskin, because, I mean, there's no evidence that she did feed her husband to the tigers. And, um, you know, I just find it quite mean that a lot of people are able to go out there and, you know, ultimately, they're calling this woman a murderer. You know, they might not be... Well, that's what they're doing by saying that. They're saying, you know, you fed your husband to the tigers, you are a murderer, but there's no evidence. And, you know, people... It's horrible if you've got, you know, half the world accusing you of doing something that you haven't done and that you didn't do, yeah. you know. So yeah. um, I'm not saying that she's innocent. I'm not saying that she's guilty. None of us know. But, you know, it's horrible to label her as a murderer especially in such a gruesome way, you know, feeding someone to tigers. My God. You've yeah. got half the nation making TikTok videos using your name and, you know, basically slandering you off as a murderer. Yeah. It's awful. I need to, you know, you know, you're inspiring me now to actually go ahead and watch it. Yes, you should. You should. Yeah, because you. Well, we know her husband could be, you know, he was a millionaire. He could be somewhere watching this and just laughing. You know? Didn't he marry three men or two men? Uh, I think he did he marry two men, didn't he? Yeah, so he's quite, you know, colourful character. That's for sure. Yes, yes, he is. So, yeah, that's a good point to make. He's a colourful character. Yeah. Um, he could, you know, 
you wouldn't really know what to expect from someone like him. So who knows what he could have done? <laughs> cool. Frame yeah. his wife, maybe, get, not getting along. You oh, know, she didn't cool. want him to um, keep the tigers caged in small places and stuff like that. I think she was challenging. She was quite challenging for him. Oh, really? Um, yeah, who knows what could have happened. Oh, well. Maybe I'm just too uh, sensitive to certain issues. <laughs> maybe I just feel too much for certain people. But, uh, well, for all people, maybe I'm just too caring. <laughs> Caring, you know, nice, empathetic female. Yes, that's the word, empathetic. Maybe I'm just too empathetic. But yeah. I do feel like people shouldn't do that to her because there's no evidence. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I don't know the story, so I'm going to watch it and then I'll then I'll be yeah. I'm going to vote with you or pro. Or yes, pro. yes, do watch it and let me know yeah. what you think about Carol Beckham. I'll Beckin. slide into your DMs and let you know. Yes, that will be good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me, Amanda, um, for having this conversation with me. It's been brilliant. You have kept me laughing all the way through, oh, honestly. you brightened up my week. Thank you. I was having a bit of a downer, but actually you've cheered me up. So thank you so much for inviting me on your interview. It's been brilliant fun. Oh, no, thank you. You take care of yourself. And uh, yeah, let me know when you're ready to launch the um, Leopard yeah. Lovers. Leopard um, lovers and lockdown um, leopards and all that. Yeah. yeah, 12th of June. Okay, I'll be in touch. Thank you I'm so much, Candy. Thank you. You take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.